Hey, I'm Jimmy Henderson, jimmyslens.com. You know, several years ago, I began photographing bird feathers, mostly macro photographs, you know, one-to-one, -one, life size or greater. And these photographs have been shown in a number of locations around the United States. And always when I give a gallery talk or somebody asks me about the photographs, they always wonder how it's done. Now, because they are macro photographs, you know, that brings a new set of challenges to a photographer. And I thought today would be a good opportunity to show you a little bit about how I work with this particular subject matter and how I overcome some of those challenges. So we're going to take a look at um, uh, some software that you may not often get to see, and that is Helicon Focus, as well as uh, show you how my setup here is. Okay, let's take a look. Well, as you can see, I got my camera on a tripod. Uh, it's actually on a set of macro rails. In this case, I'm using it really just for the horizontal motion so I can fine tune any kind of composition without having to move the feather itself once it's in position. I've got a, a single mono light with some Roscoe Tough Spun in front of it just for, uh, to soften it a little bit. On the side opposite the light and slightly to the front, I'm using a white bounce card. The feather itself, this gorgeous peacock feather, is being held in position by a, a small clip on the end of a manipulatable arm. Now, this arm can be maneuvered into pretty much any position you would want, and so uh, it works very well for this particular subject matter. Behind the subject, by about four or five feet, is a uh, plain muslin backdrop. It's black and I'm using barn doors on my light to keep any stray light off of the background when I go to shoot because I want it to go absolutely black, you know, like a zero background. You can see one of the problems right here. My camera is about 12 or 14 inches from the subject and the subject itself has a depth to it. It's easy to think of feathers as flat, but they're really not, and especially when you put it at this kind of an angle, like some kind of staircase, an elegant staircase. We have a depth of, you know, six, hmm, probably eight, six inches here, six or seven inches depth. And um, when you're focused this close, it normally, you, you won't be able to bring all that in focus at once. So. Using our software, Helic and Focus, we can take a picture and focus here and here and here and here and here all the way back and then combine those images in the software to make it in focus from front to back. My camera is tethered by USB to my computer so you'll be able to see exactly what I do here. So let's take a look and you can see. Okay, so here we are inside Helic and Remote. Uh, as you can see, it found my camera. It's got my shutter speed, my aperture, my ISO, quality, whether you're set in RAW or JPEG, etc. Now, what you don't see is anything that I'm looking at. So, I'm going to turn on live view. And you see it is a black screen. And that's because I'm using Studio Flash with this particular image. And the shutter speed is set such that, based on the modeling lights, uh, we're not able to see a picture. So I'm going to turn my shutter speed, I'm going to slow my shutter speed down so we can at least see what we're looking at. So here's my image. And you can see part of the area is in focus. Most of this feather is not in focus. And we're going to fix that. So, um, I mean, you can actually turn on a depth of field preview by clicking there to see just how deep the depth of field is. And you can see we are out of focus on this end for sure. And we drift out of focus again up here. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm unsure that that anything is still set from where I was testing earlier so I'm just gonna check things I'm gonna clear these saved points um, 
and then go over here to the area that I want to be in focus. Now I want this to be in focus and this is closest to the camera. So I'm going to click over there because you see it now enlarges that area and by slightly adjusting the focus using this focus bracketing button it changes the focal point and I can see what's in focus and what is not. Now it looks like that is about that's about where my closest focus point is going to be. So I'm going to click that again to make it go back to normal size and then come over here and this button labeled A is going to be the near focusing point. So once I've clicked on that it locks that in. You see the little padlock there. It's now locked into the memory and it shows that there are zero of zero focusing steps. So um, uh, it's just begun its measurements from there. Now we can go, we can focus farther away from the camera by using the arrows pointing to the right or closer to the camera by the arrows pointing to the left. So uh, we have a small step, a medium step, and a large step. And I'm going to use a medium step because while this is not by any means a deep stack, it is, um, it's a good bit of distance to cover. Okay, and it looks like maybe two medium steps is actually going to be too much. We're, we actually went past uh, our point of farthest focus, so I'm going to back it up a little bit here to get a look. Looks like maybe somewhere around there. So let me enlarge this. Can go a little bit one way and the other. Just to see. Okay, it's clearly we have passed it there. Okay, so I'm thinking around there. Well, let me go back to normal size here. And then I'm going to come over to the B, which is our far point registration, and I'm going to lock that one. So now Helicon Remote knows the near focus point and the farthest focus point, and it can make some calculations based on that. If I turn that on to auto, it's going to take one image there. And that's only of our final that last uh, focus point that we set. But it now knows that if it shoots four shots at an interval of three focusing steps then it will be in focus from this nearest point to the farthest point. Now what I have learned from photographing feathers is that well you can see it moving even now Apparently the air conditioning has come on. And one thing that I have learned is that the feathers are designed to catch any air movement. I mean that's how feathers work. That's how birds fly. And one of the problems is that if you if you limit it to the smallest number of images necessary to achieve that depth of focus then one possibility is that well let's take this as an example this should be theoretically it should be in focus in at least one of the photographs that we take but if this is in motion from some small breeze then there's a good possibility that it will not be in focus in either of the photographs that should contain it in focus. So I'm actually going to, I say disregard, I'm, I'm cognizant of what the software is suggesting, but I also know that in this case I'm going to turn off the automatic exposure and instead I'm going to go for, well, let's go for five shots instead, each using two. I suppose you could you could go for seven shots, each with an interval of one, if you really wanted to be critical. But I think I'm just going to bump it up a little bit.
Now let's take a quick look here in our depth of field preview. And if you want to check things, there is actually, if you click this focused selection, it shows you by highlighting the areas that are in focus. This is kind of a neat feature. I'm going to turn that off and then change my shutter speed because again I'm not using continuous lights I'm using studio flash so I'm gonna set that to a sync speed for my camera I'm gonna turn off the live view here and really I'm doing that just as a matter of battery conservation okay and then go up to the button labeled start shooting press that and immediately you see the numbers start going down over here. It's now gone back to the area of closest focus and has just made its first exposure. And it's going to shoot five shots. Okay, so it's made its shots, and then it tells me that five images were saved into the designated folder, and it asks then, do you want to go ahead and take these into Helic and Focus? And in this case, I'm going to say, yes, I do. And immediately, Helic and Focus opens up, and it has placed our five raw files over here and that's a great thing about Helicon actually that it can handle raw files if you for whatever reason have converted your files your camera raw into a DNG file the Adobe digital negative format it will take those as well if you want to shoot in JPEG you can drop those in it's pretty it's pretty competent with whatever file format you choose Then if you look down here, there is a rendering method to choose from. Method A, the weighted average, which produces smooth transitions and preserves colors. Method B, which is a depth map, works best for continuous surfaces. Method C, it says it's good for intersecting objects in deep, deep stacks. Now, while it's true that feathers do have a lot of intersecting fibers, etc. You know, bits of the feather that cross over each other. In this case, I'm going to go with method A. I would recommend that you use each of the methods and choose which works best for a particular subject. There are sometimes, uh, I have used method C, probably more often than not, actually. Uh, but I want to go ahead and start making a test to see which is going to actually work the best for this subject. Sometimes you'll get with some um, some halos with one method and you won't get it with another. Sometimes you will get uh, different color renditions with one method as opposed to another and this way you'll be able to compare them and choose which is going to be well to be honest to choose which is going to be easiest to retouch. Anytime you make a stack, you can pretty much count on doing some amount of retouching. And that's just the nature of things. But, you know, as a photographer, we do some amount of retouching with pretty much any image we shoot anyway, don't we? And for the sake of speed and time, that is to keep you from watching rendering, I'm going to scale this image down on the output side to make it a bit faster. Let's go with method A, the weighted average. And I'm going to leave these on the default settings. And um, 
they work surprisingly well actually and though sometimes you may need to reduce the amount of the radius uh, or the smoothing the default works pretty well for most things okay so I clicked on the render button and now it is doing all the calculations that I would rather not do in my head It puts them up side by side so you can see what is done at any given time. As you see, it started with the image that is closest to us. Right now, those look very sharp, don't they? We have good sharpness there. <clears throat> You'll also notice here in the output, as well as having its uh, progress report, it lists in the file name what method you're using and the settings that you have. This is method A, radius of 8, smoothing of 4, and it's reduced in size to 33%. and it has completed the image it's all finished um, let's zoom in and take a little look and see how things look that's at 75 percent now one thing you can do if you need to move the image around if you hold down the space bar the your cursor then turns into a hand and we can move up into the image and see We'll see if our focus points held true. And things look pretty good overall. I think there are some some points that will require a little retouching. And that's beyond the scope of what this introduction is supposed to be. This is really designed to just uh, give you an introduction to the software and the method and uh, let you see some of the possibilities. So uh, this was done very quickly, as you see, uh, some 15 minutes or so. And, uh, and the results are pretty good. And so uh, it's completed, and I'm just going to save this file out by clicking the uh, Save button down below. You'll notice that it is saving as a DNG, which is very handy. That means you can drop it into Photoshop or Lightroom. And... Uh, and do more work there. You can also, you have the opportunity of saving the project file by going to the file menu and clicking save project file. Um, so you could come back and do retouching on the same project if you have a lot to do, as some cases would. You can come back and work on it later. Well thanks for watching. Go out there and shoot some stacks and do some work.